नमस्कार टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द मेयर ऑफ कैस्टर ब्रिज वन ऑफ थॉमस हार्डीज वेसेक्स नॉवेल्स इट इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी वन ऑफ हिज मास्टर पीसेज सो लेट्स बिगिन विद हिज फेमस कोट हैप्पीनेस वॉज बट द ओकेजनल एपिसोड इन अ जनरल ड्रामा ऑफ पेन थॉमस हार्डी इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट रिनाउड पोएट एंड नॉवलिस्ट इन इंग्लिश लिटरेरी हिस्ट्री He was born in Hyer Wokehampton, Dorset, England on 2nd June 1840. His primary school education lasted until he was 16. Then he was sent for apprenticeship with the local architect and church restorer John Hicks. By 1862, when he was 22, Hardy left for London to work as a draftsman in the office of a leading architect, Arthur Bloomfield. there the work of mill comte arnold and darwin influenced him to a great deal and helped in shaping his thoughts by 1872 hardy left architecture to devote his time to his literary career during a project for his company hardy met emma lavinia gifford in cornwall and got married in 1874 Initially a happy couple they remained childless and eventually became estranged Emma died in 1912 after 14 months after his first wife's death in 1914 Hardy married Florence Emily Dugdale who was his secretary and nearly 40 years younger to him He died on January 11 1928 His heart was buried with his first wife Emma among the family graves and the rest of his remains were cremated and interred next to English novelist Charles Dickens in the poet's corner of Westminster Abbey an appropriate resting place for one of the most widely read Victorian writers Thomas Hardy regarded himself primarily as a poet but he gained fame as a novelist moving on to hardy's famous novels his first novel the poor man and the lady was rejected by several publishers a second one desperate remedies was accepted and published in 1871 his next novel under the greenwood tree published in 1872 and established him as a more accomplished novelist the next novel far from the maddening crowd published in 1874 from then on hardy became more and more successful as a fiction writer publishing 10 novels and 50 short stories from 1876 to 1895 his later and most famous novels come from this period The Return of the Native in 1878, The Mayor of Casterbridge in 1886, The Woodlanders published in 1887, Tests of the De Arbervilles in 1891, and Jude the Obscure published in 1895. Let's begin with the novel. The title of this novel is The Life and Death of Mayor of Casterbridge a story of a man of character and its author is Thomas Hardy It is a novel and its genre is tragedy Time and place in which it is written is 1885 to 1886 in Dorchester England The narrator is anonymous who speaks in the third person It is set in 1800 in Casterbridge England that is a fictional town when the novel begins michael hancher the protagonist intoxicated at a village fair impulsively sells his wife susan an infant daughter elizabeth jane at auction for the sum of 5 guineas waking up the next day He experiences extreme remorse and makes a solemn vow not to touch alcohol for the next 21 days. 
After a gap of 18 years, Henchard's wife Susan and her daughter tracked him down. Through hard work, he has become wealthy and socially influential as the mayor of Casterbridge. Susan agrees to remarry him on his request. Henchard befriends Donald Farfree, who helps him to prosper in business, but soon they part ways, becoming bitter rivals. Susan becomes ill and before her death, she writes a letter to Henchard telling him that Elizabeth Jane is not really his daughter. Her father is Richard Newson, who bought Susan at auction. Now Henchard starts treating Elizabeth Jane with cold indifference. Lucetta Templeman, the old beloved of Henchard, marries Donald Farfree. Her shift of affections enrages Henchard and he becomes obsessed with ruining Farfree to get his revenge. He suffers huge losses in his business and finally declared bankrupt. He also becomes social outcast when everyone learns that he had sold Susan at auction. Meanwhile, local gossip led to Lucetta's downfall as well. Both she and Henchard are publicly humiliated in Casterbridge. Due to this, Lucetta becomes fatally ill and dies. After her death, Donald Farfree and Elizabeth Jane are married. This is the last straw for Henchard. Now an impoverished, embittered wanderer, he dies a lonely death in a poor cottage. Hardy had used many symbols in the novel to represent abstract ideas and concepts. The first one is five guineas. A guinea consists of 21 ceilings. This is the price Richard Newson pays when Henchard auctions off his wife, when Henchard writes Susan a note asking her to meet him at the ring, he encloses five guineas. This symbolically suggests that Henchard regards an intimate human relationship as a commercial transaction. He pursues his quest for a remarriage to Susan with business-like determination. Hancher chooses a caged goldfinch as his wedding gift to his stepdaughter Elizabeth Jane. This bird initially suggests Hancher's love for his daughter, but its cage and death foreshadow Hancher's own death, as he is imprisoned by the conflicts and disappointments of his life. The bull that chases down Lucetta and Elizabeth Jane stands as a symbol of the brute forces that threaten human life. Malignant, deadly and bent on destruction, it seems to incarnate the unnamed forces that Henchard often bemoans. Various themes prevail in this novel. The first and foremost theme is marriage as a transaction. Throughout the novel, marriage dominates the plot. Henchard handles his relationship with Susan as a commercial transaction, buying her back for the same price as he sold her many years ago, five guineas. Fate or destiny is a leading theme of this novel. Hardy dramatizes the role of fate and destiny in numerous ways. Long absent characters such as Joshua Job and Richard Newson unexpectedly reappear to play a major part in the action. Situations and conflicts undergo unanticipated reversals. For example, the friendship between Henchard and Farfree, the shift in Lucetta's affections and the belief Henchard is Elizabeth Jane's father. For Hardy, in the end the role of destiny in human affairs is inscrutable. Rivalry is a major thematic strain in the Mayor of Casterbridge. This theme is most clearly illustrated by the competition between Henchard and Farfree, which unfolds in many different spheres of the two men's lives. In politics and society, Farfree slowly gains influence and prestige and is finally installed as Mayor of the town. 
while Henchard suffers disgrace and humiliation. In romance, Henchard also loses out to Farfree when Lucetta rejects him and weds Farfree instead. Finally, Henchard's morbid fear of losing Elizabeth Jane is borne out when she marries Farfree and reproaches Henchard for having lied to Richard Newson, her real father. Many characters in The Mayor of Casterbridge engage in deception, lies and half-truth come to dominate life in Hardy's fictional world. The results of such behavior are nearly always damaging. Susan deceives Henchard into thinking he is Elizabeth Jane's real father. Toward the end of the novel, Henchard lies to Newson, telling him Elizabeth Jane is dead. Lucetta also practices deception when she conceals her past links with Henchard from Farfree. Henchard conceals the most shameful action in his past, the auctioning of his wife to the highest bidder. The theme of pride in the novel is closely related to the themes of rivalry and deception. Pride motivates many of Henchard's actions and conflicts, both external and internal. Like Henchard, Lucetta has a complex past and a deep anxiety about maintaining her pride and dignity. When her love letters written to Henchard become public and she is publicly mocked, in the skimity ride, her pride is dealt a mortal blow. Here are some suggested reading material to help you get a better understanding of Thomas Hardy's The Mayor of Casterbridge. Now, I would like to end my presentation by quoting Thomas Hardy. Time changes everything except something within us which is always surprised by change. Thank you for watching this video. Namaskar.